Experts hail the coronavirus vaccines as one of humanity's greatest achievements. It took a matter of months, as opposed to years or decades. But we're still in uncharted territory. In Norway, 33 seniors died after being inoculated against COVID-19. Authorities are investigating whether there was a link. There's been the odd issue in the past with other vaccines. That's why the world is setting up monitoring systems, watching out for side effects that may not have been seen in big clinical trials. Still hopes are high that this is the best vaccine in history. It's a race between injections and infections, and Israel is winning. It's inoculated a quarter of its population. Scientists are closely watching to see how effective the vaccine is when given to an entire population and checking to see if it's safe. This basketball stadium in Tel Aviv is now a vaccination center. People under the age of 35 are already being immunized here, while older residents are getting their second jab. The vaccines are being administered in record time. BioNTech Pfizer is delivering millions of doses. In return, the pharma companies are receiving valuable data that allows them to measure the efficacy of their product. I don't have a problem with the data agreement, and I don't feel like I'm part of an experiment. We're leading the world on vaccinations, and Israel offers the right kind of infrastructure. It's Israel's healthcare system with its universal insurance that makes the country so interesting to BioNTech Pfizer. Insurance companies allocate doctors to patients, streamlining the vaccination program. The digitalized and centralized nature of data collection has created a treasure trove of readily available information. If one wants to understand how a real world rollout of a vaccine program impacts public health, then Israel with its digital health repositories and its very strong methodological capabilities and its uh, a very good outreach of public health and clinical health to all of the citizens is probably an ideal place to do that. The main objective is to find out at what stage the vaccination drive achieves herd immunity and to figure out ways to get there fast. The data used in the research has been made anonymous. But that hasn't stopped critics from sounding the alarm. People are saying, what's the problem with anonymized data? And the problem is that anonymized data, medical data today, can be uh, transferred to be non-anonymized if you have the right tools and the right technology. We want to have a kind of an oversight experts that will make sure that this data uh, is not going to be exploited later by third parties. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has emphasized that the findings will benefit the rest of the world. But his prime focus is the impact that the vaccination program is having in Israel itself. We will be the first country to defeat the pandemic. The deal I have struck with Pfizer allows us to vaccinate everyone above 16 by the end of March. The ambitious target coincides with parliamentary elections, which Netanyahu is hoping to win. But while the number of vaccinations are shooting up, so too are infections, a race against time that Israel is determined to win. Still, we don't know how long immunity lasts and if there are long-term effects. But let's look at the immediate effects with Rolf Hermke from the German Association of Research-Based Pharmaceutical Companies. I asked him, what I should do if I get a headache, fatigue or other symptoms after the injection. Well, it's absolutely normal to have some transient mild reaction to a vaccination, like the ones you've mentioned or raised temperature for a while, this sort of thing. So if you experience that, you probably don't have to do anything but just wait for a moment. Mm -hmm. But if it's longer lasting or if it's more severe, the best thing or the important thing to do is really report it to the doctor and make sure that your possible side effects get reported to the authorities. What, what would be more severe or serious side effects that enforce a regulator to say uh, act? Well, if they are more, uh, if they are more prolonged, really, they don't go away. 
and of course um, they really have to react to reports when it uh, when the symptoms uh, need hospital treatment or if they are in in some way really threatening okay so this is all being monitored but what about in countries where there's no reliable safety monitoring going on this used to be a huge problem, but uh, there's been progress in recent years. The WHO, the World Health Organization, has worked with partners to, do, to create a so-called MED Safety App. That's an app that can be used on, uh, on mobile phones, and this enables everyone to report side effects. And so because many, even uh, poorer countries nowadays have mobile phone networks. This is really a way how to spread uh, a reporting system even in resource poor settings. Mr. Hunke, can you tell me, are the people being monitored who've got the vaccine, been given the vaccine, are they also being checked to see that they don't get sick and pass on the virus? This is checked. This is part of the, the clinical trials to find out. But it's not as easy to find this out as it is to see if people get symptomatic COVID-19 or not. So it takes longer to find out. And part of finding out is, of course, to see if when you vaccinate people in a certain region, does this decrease the pandemic more than is just explained from having certain people for themselves being immune to the virus. In the meantime, um, some of us are going to have to wait a long time to get this vaccine. I mean, shouldn't I just wait and see how it goes with other people? Well, the disease is there. Uh, the virus is spreading, keeps spreading, keeps mutating and we see new versions of the virus which are probably even more easy to contract. So for everyone who has the opportunity to get a vaccination, this is certainly a much better option than having the risk of getting infected soon. And we're not having to pay for it, are we? Well, in Germany and in the European Union, the um, the, the governments pay for the vaccination and um, in various countries uh, outside EU uh, this is also the case but of course uh, that doesn't apply to every country in the world. Rolf Hömke there from the German Association of Research-Based Pharmaceutical Companies. Let's take a quick look at what is the first photo of SARS-CoV-2. Until now, images of the microscopic menace that's plagued the world have been computer-generated models, but not these. Technicians at Nanographics, a spin-off from Vienna's Technical University, have used 3D technology to scan the virus and then colour it. It gives us the most detailed view yet. Researchers hope it'll help them fight the disease more effectively as the actual shapes of the particles are now clearer than before. Incredible, something so little and pretty can cause so much trouble. And if that's not enough to fascinate you, maybe Derek Williams will. Here's his daily segment answering your questions on the coronavirus. How does the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine work? I've answered this before, but the question is posted again and again, so I guess it's maybe time to go over the details again. Um, two of the vaccines that have now been widely approved, uh, one developed by BioNTech and Pfizer and one produced by Moderna, are what are called uh, messenger RNA or mRNA vaccines. Now, the technology behind them has been at the focus of a lot of research for decades, but but this is the first time they've received widespread approval from healthcare authorities. Um, unlike vaccines based on traditional platforms, uh, ones that, for example, use inactivated versions of the virus, uh, the BioNTech Pfizer vaccine leads to an immune response in the body by delivering information in the form of a special molecule, a messenger RNA. 
mRNA molecules are, are single stranded chains of what are called nucleotides that fulfill a, a very important function in cells. They're, they're kind of the blueprints for making proteins and act as messengers between a cell's headquarters in the nucleus and its protein building factories out in the cytoplasm, hence, hence the name. Uh, but the protein these new mRNA vaccines encode for isn't a human one. It's a protein made by the coronavirus. And when that mRNA is injected, it causes your cells to begin making that viral protein. And that viral protein provokes an immune response, just as if you'd caught COVID-19. Sending in the pretty simple, quick to produce mRNA code molecules to make these complicated proteins and getting the body to do the work is a great solution to a complex problem. And, and there are high hopes that mRNA vaccines, uh, which, which seem to have finally come into their own, um, are now set to, to revolutionize a range of fields in medicine. Finally, even in a pandemic, there's romance. A British couple who were critically ill with the virus has married on the COVID ward. Nurse Elizabeth Kerr and fiancé Simon O'Brien, her ambulance driver, were so sick, doctors told them it might be their only chance to tie the knot. Both are still receiving oxygen and they'll have to wait a few days for their first kiss, but the bride says she's content to wait. We've got a wedding story that can trump anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry.